Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Skybreak and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. It has been so long since I did one of these, but uh, I'm really excited to be back and I'm excited to show you guys some new stuff. So today we are going to be making uh, a few pads and atmospheres using a technique called the convolution reverb. And um, you can find a convolution reverb within the kilohertz bundle. Uh, I know Ableton has a stock one that's relatively usable, but me personally, I just like to use Fruity Convolver because it's, it's the stock FL one. But um, yeah, so let me go into what Convolution Reverb is and how it's supposed to be used first. Okay, so essentially what uh, a Fruity Convolver is, or what any conv Convolution Reverb is, is it mimics a room from a one sample impulse. So let's say, for example, if I were to mic myself up and uh, I just do a little clap in here. Uh, obviously, I don't know why you would use my room because my dorm acoustics are absolutely terrible. But let's say you wanted to, you would just do a really sudden impulse like this. And theoretically, if you're using a good enough microphone, which I'm not, this is just a mono mic, um, you'll be able to emulate a room like fully uh, with all the acoustics, all the reflections, all the, you know, everything, every characteristic of reverb, you can basically simulate it. So... Let's actually just chuck this convolver onto track 16, I guess. And um, if I pull up a quick piano, I like imager pianos, so let's do that. I just play a few notes. D minor triad really quickly. And yeah, so if I rooted this to this uh, convolver and I drag in that thing we recorded from my bedroom into the convolver, it should emulate the exact sound. Or, well, I mean, like, <laughs> as well as a mono microphone is going to. But even still, you know. There you go. Now it's in this room. <laughs> so this turns into this. And um, a lot of people, especially within color base, have kind of been, you know, misusing convolution. Well, it, not, there's no such thing as misusing, but it's like they've been using convolvers um as like a way to colorize bases. So um, I've seen Chime, he likes to drag a lot of like arps and stuff into it. Yeah, usually just arps doing like little jingles over like plucks and stuff. It's a good place to start. But um, today we're gonna be using this in a new way, uh, a very cool way actually. So really quickly, um, we're just gonna select a preset in Fruity Convolver uh, called Blur White. And you can recreate this in most convolvers. All you really need is like a long, long string of white noise. Let's check this out. It completely like blurs everything we put into it. So it basically squashes all our transients and turns it into this long kind of, you know, tempo-less atmosphere. Uh, this is a similar technique to long, long ago when I released my Oliver's Parachute Remix Breakdown. Um, I was talking about how if you drag a sample into Edison and you press the blur function, it turns it into this big, long atmosphere, transientless atmosphere. But what's cool about this convolver technique is you can do it in real time. You can put a ton of effects before it and stuff, and it sounds really cool. So um, now that we've got this, let's play around a little bit. Um, an OTT right before the convolver is never going to hurt you. Okay, let's spare my CPU a bit. Be right there, we start to flatten out the frequency response. I don't know why this keeps bumping back up, but check that out. So now, um, what I like to do when I'm making atmospheres specifically is I, rather than playing just, you know, chords, I place a bunch of random notes, typically within the pentatonic minor scale. And if they just play a bunch of them at like random positions and times, Get this really cool kind of... Oh, it's just bliss. Check that out. So yeah, it turns that piano into a really pretty atmosphere. And what's also really cool about this is you can stack a, d a ton of like different things into the same chain. So for example, Today, I'm going to use the acapella from my track with In Fowler and Christian Hayward, Clockwork. Uh, I've been using this acapella as a placeholder very often. So, here we go. We got the, our acapella here. As you can hear, it's a semitone up. That dissonance was very fun. 
So we're just going to pitch it down because it's originally in D-sharp minor, F-sharp major, and we're writing in D minor. So we're going to bring it down to D minor. And time passes by. So check this out. Now we're going to blur this with the everything because the OTT is going to compress it down and then we blur the crap out of it. So if we just control plus L, check this out. Isn't that super cool? We can shape the timbre of the pad by doing a bunch of stuff before this uh, convolver, and uh, yeah. But it doesn't stop there. We can drag as much stuff as we want as long as it's in key, honestly, because at this point, tempo is not a concern, because we're just having this big blurred wall of sound that's going on anyway. So um, let's grab like a guitar loop. If I go to my miscellaneous and essentials folder, Boop, boop, boom. Vengeance rhythm guitars. Nah, let's go for prime loops, melodic guitar hooks. Let's get something with a lot of like, um. Oh my god, beautiful. Beautiful, that's the one. That's the sample we're going for. Um, so yeah, so this is labeled F minor and we're writing in D minor. So we just gotta bring this down three semitones. So suddenly. Well, that's a bit fast. <laughs> Suddenly we can turn this into, and we start to combine it together with everything. It sounds a bit more like this. Hmm, the voicings are starting to get a bit cluttered together, so I bumped up uh, the piano an octave. Yeah, let's just, um, let's copy-paste up this a bunch of times, uh, all these crazy notes and stuff we've got going here. And a little bit of basic EQing just before the convolver isn't really gonna hurt anyone, so we'll do a bit of that as well. Maybe just, especially right there, there's a lot of mud and grit, so, um, just duck out a little bit of there. But we can stack as many timbres as we want before this. Um, you can put entire songs through this chain and it's gonna still sound pretty good. So for example, I guess we're working in D minor, so I'll pick a track of mine that's in D minor. Specifically, let's go with uh, my track Wildfire with Millennial Trash. Uh, so if we just drag this entire song and we put it through the same chain, check this out. I'm gonna solo it first. So we all know and love the original. Or if you don't, why are you here? Just kidding. So it sounds like that, but put through our little chain of effects, we get it to sound a bit more like this. Pure bliss. So fun messing around with this stuff. So yeah, so we just layer that in with everything else, you know, gain stage it a bit better, and we get something like this. What's also fun about this is no matter how far you stretch out the samples, you won't get any of those like terrible artifacts. So we could legit just time stretch this a ton like this. And it still sounds very tonal and atmospheric. So that's one perk about this technique. You can really just stretch things as far as you want. So let's stretch the guitar as well, why not? So now we've got a bunch of timbres um, all put together, but we can actually take this pad making process to a whole new level. Because we have this convolver blurring everything out and transients aren't too much of a concern anymore, we can do really stupid crazy stuff like full peak, uh, full resonance phasers and filters, and my favorite thing is Vocodex. Check this out, it's gonna make the sound sound really icy, uh, is the best way I can describe it. Check this out. And uh, my favorite type of phaser to use for this kind of pad would be um, Ubix Phaser. It's called Ubix P. It comes in their bundle. 
uh, which is really nice. So if we just crank the heck out of the feedback and maybe turn up the frequency spectrum a little bit, um, you get a bit of this. Let's do some final EQing after the pad as well. Yeah, it's got all that nasty resonance. We can get rid of that. Just heavenly, honestly. And oh, it's just, I just love this technique so much. Um, you can just add anything you want. You can, again, whole songs, everything. Um, and it's fun to just experiment with a bunch of effects before the Convolver like we're doing. Um, so another good one, especially if you want to make those big, you know, a cloudy sky style wall of sound type things, uh, wave shaping distortion and just cranking that before this convolver is just going to make it. It just adds a whole lot of like aggression and full frequency -ness to the sound. And uh, one last thing I like to usually add to my pads is Crystallizer. So Crystallizer is a grain delay plugin from Sound Toys and has this distinct, what do you know, crystally sound. Um, I've used this in a lot of my tutorials, specifically made good use of it in my goodbye tutorial. But um, here, we're actually just using it almost as like an extra delay that's going to increase, kind of increase the decay of the sound. Uh, so if we chuck this before the, the uh, convolution reverb, we get almost like a twin octave effect, but it's in a really unique kind of way. Check this out. This really opens it up a bunch. Just absolutely stunning work. Um, so let's um let's quickly bypass the master and just show <laughs> what we're blurring. Barely musical at all. It's all in key, but it's like what is going on? But we add all these effects, um, and we get a pad. Crazy stuff, and it all just comes from this convolver. If we get rid of it, it's just. Sounds cool, don't know how usable it is, but I mean like... It's just so nice. Uh, so one last thing, uh, we are gonna quickly hit with Edison. Cause um, like I was saying before, one of my favorite parts about this is it is real time, real time pad making. So anything you do before this Convolver, um, it's gonna change in real time. So what that means is essentially if we if we load up an edison and we hit record we can do real-time pad jams uh, i especially like to use you know filters and really harsh peaks like that they usually just sound terrible but as we move them around adds whole new movements to the pads in fact what we're going to actually do here is we're going to get a really resonance low pass filter a really resonant resonance that's great grammar so yeah i'm talking like bandwidth super low and as we start to open and close it in real time if we just want to loop this uh we've got to make sure we're recording we are check this out put this ott after it so that's what's rebalancing our frequency spectrum.
And no matter how like sharp or sudden the automations you do are, they're always gonna sound good because of that blur function. It's literally like a free ticket to anything. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's pretty much how I make the initial pad, but uh, which means we're gonna move to part two of this video, which is how I utilize it. So a common misconception about pads in general um, are that they're the similar, they're the same thing as back in the 1980s when um, a pad was thought as, you know, like a wow kind of you know one one note thing that you press down and you can play like chords or whatever on a keyboard and yes that does apply i would call it more of like you know just a chord patch or whatever um but with these pads you're playing a bunch of notes at the same time so it creates this kind of wall of notes wall of sound type deal uh, which can f confuse a lot of people because you're like, well, wait, like, how do I use this? How do I write a chord progression under it or have it sound musical? And um, I'm going to show you a quick psychoacoustic trick. So all you've got to do is you just high pass it all the way up um, to around 100 hertz or so. And we're going to fill up that region with sub eventually, so don't fret. But um, yeah, so... If it starts from there, we don't have a root note anymore or anything. We just have a collage of a bunch of notes in key. So when we add a respace or a sub, um, you'll see it starts to create the chord progression depending on what our lowest note is. So we've got our serum loaded up now. Uh, I typically like to just bump my unison all the way up to 16. And I add a sub. So if I just place a note really quickly, I believe we're in D minor. There we go, perfect. So we've got this Reese going. If you want to get a little bit extra, um, I like to open the wavetable editor really quickly, and I remove the first partial, this bin one, we just bring it all the way down. And uh, what this means is our fundamental frequency is now just a clean, very mono sub, and everything else is just super stereo. It's just a lot more of a balanced frequency response. So next, um, what I do is I just clip the heck out of it using 3D Wave Shaper. You know, we just bring it up. All right. Loudness warning. Sounds beautiful. And um, next up, we just low pass all this sweet stuff down. Uh, I like to go to around 150 hertz. You can hear now we've got a very thick and wide kind of deep pad going on now, but it still has a decent amount of mono content. And if you want to get super turbo extra, sometimes a side high pass up to 100 hertz is never going to hurt. That way, you just get a bit of stereo information up here, but everything below here is mono. Right, so let's chuck this under the pad and let's see what we can do. Why is that so loud? So yeah, so I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Now we're just gonna place a few notes down in key and it's gonna form chords. Check this out. Now you've basically heard every Skybreak intro ever. Uh, all it takes is two elements, just a pad and a Reese. And um, yeah, you really don't have to change anything. You don't have to play a ton of notes or anything. Um, and you'll just be able to create chords using those two things. So that's about it for the video. Um, I hope you guys all learned something this was very <laughs> very well coordinated i know I, I literally i swear on my life i have the perfect take of this but my mic was on the wrong setting so this is like my fifth attempt of this video but uh, i hope it helped out uh and if you like the video be sure to hit that subscribe button um i hopefully have a few more coming and be sure to follow me on social media like uh, twitter instagram uh facebook myspace whatever whatever you kids are using these days um just be sure to follow me there and uh, I post regular content, usually just more so music stuff and like, you know, pictures and images. Um, it's been a really great year, guys. Thank you all so much for the support. And um, other than that, you know, my name is Skybreak and I'll see you guys very soon.